Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Rise of Mordor video for you today and this one's a little bit different, no battle, no siege, but we have a unit overview. If you've seen any of these before, you know how these are going to go, but for those of you who haven't, I will quickly run through what happens with these videos. We kind of go, we basically go over every unit that a faction has. Uh, I usually cover factions that have been mainly completed, so things like elves have never got, not been done yet, but Eastlings got a, a load of new units added in the latest update most of their lower tier units have been added so I felt now was the time to really co uh, cover them now that they are more fleshed out and complete faction so we'll start with the swords we'll go to the spears um, and then any other like sort of like and then we've got shock infantry I think and then we have um, things like pikes halberds archers and then cav at the end so yes we will cover it in that sort of order so yes we will get straight on into it um, but yeah, if you're enjoying sort of Rise of Mortal content and would like to see more videos on Rise of Mortal, do remember, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're not here, and a comment to show your support. As always, guys, it massively helps. And uh, yeah, we'll get straight on into it with the uh, the first unit, which is the Clan Axeman. So we will work from like lowest like tier unit all the way up to like the highest tier. So we'll start with like the Levy, Trains, then Elites. Um, so as you can see here, we're Clan Axeman. That are the first unit uh, here today. So this is the most basic sword that we have it's not even a sword it's an axe unit um so we will as you can see that's already like a bit of a difference like these things don't really have swords they have more axes so uh yeah so they have very poor armor very poor missile block chance and ha has a missile weapon so they do as you can see in their hand have javis so it's a handy sort of a uh, extra weapon that these guys have which could be useful in uh, sieges or maybe like supporting cav you never know but yeah this unit is uh, obviously levy 190 man unit so usually a levy unit is pretty uh, sizable melee attack at 22 melee damage at 32 that axe probably does do a decent amount of melee damage charge bonus 20 melee defense 37 uh, armor 15 so i mean these, yeah if you focus these guys down enough with archers you're going to start to kill them pretty quickly as you can see there with that 50 missile block chance they're not blocking much uh, i mean their morale is 35 but i'm base is 25 so yeah this is that's not a good sign uh they're not gonna be breaking uh, they're gonna be breaking pretty quickly health at 80 which is pretty standard for like man factions that their health is at 80 and their speed is at 36 they are light so they are quite quick um and they have two javis as you can see there they have the ammunition of two so yeah i mean maybe if you had like i've seen these guys being brought but i mean i think if you were like had some just money left over in a siege i would maybe bring these guys um i wouldn't be bringing these as like a mainline infantry that is for sure um, as the Eastlings, but we'll move on to the next unit, which is this unit here, which, as you can see, already looking a little bit more elite, and these guys looking a little bit more like the, uh, the unit we all know and love, these things, which we'll get onto in a moment, but these are the Runic Warriors, so these are more like your, um, like, middle of the road, sort of like infantry, these are the, like, the trained light axe infantry, and you can see they have all greens, they have good melee defense, good melee attack, and average missile block chance as well, so, they, yeah, they're already looking pretty damn good 170 man unit so it's a pretty sizable unit already we have a massive increase as well on a uh, melee attack as well at 34 melee damage at 32 so still sticking at that 32 with the axe um but yeah melee attack like being up already like a lot um that's like a massive like 12 i think that's up already so that's huge melee defense at 38 armor at 45 so we're seeing an increase there as well by about three times as much armor um uh, health at 80 which, as we said, is standard, and base morale is at 32, so already looking pretty, like, a lot better on that morale, st uh, like, sort of stage. Missile block of 45 as well, so these guys, as you can see, they have a pretty decent, like, shield. They have, like, some good armor. They can, like, block some stuff if they want to. But, yeah, I've seen these guys brought quite a lot as a mainline infantry, so in, like, a cheaper variant of uh, the next unit we're going to have a look at. But, yeah, these guys are also pretty handy. They can form shield wall. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty handy units, to be honest. Yeah, then the final, like, sword unit, which is way over here, here you go, is the Loki Rim. This is the unit we all know and love for these things. This is what you see in, like, the movies, um, these guys here. They are amazing, and they are very well armored. These are probably regarded as one of the better, like, better infantry, inf infantry units in Rise of Water. Probably, like, one of the best mainline infantry units that you can bring, I would certainly say. I think they... The solid units, you can see them certainly in some battles get like 200 kills plus. They are very, very good. And they've got that nasty mace there that you can see. I mean, I would not want to mess around with this mace. Look at that thing. If you're on the wrong end of that, you're, you're a dead man. But anyway, and I mean, also just like 
mention just look at all the detail and stuff i know we actually didn't really have a look at other units but like look at the detail on these guys like all the little like intricate like uh, markings to put on the armor and stuff like just to tip my hat to the uh, rise of mordor do team they do such a great job blow. on these models um, but yeah, Locurian Macewind, heavy axe unit. They were a sword unit at one point, but they have been changed to an axe unit. Um, they are trained. I'm surprised they weren't down as elite, but I guess that, that means that they then have to limit how many you could bring. Because Locurian, I think, in um, in like the Rise of Mordor lore, are like an elite unit, to be honest, like brought from Rune. But uh, yeah, they've got excellent melee damage, good melee attack, uh, average armor. They have a melee attack of 37, so a slight increase, but not much on the Runic Warriors, to bear in mind. And there is a big price difference between the two. Uh, melee damage of 26, uh, charge bonus 20, uh, melee defense 53, so we're seeing a huge increase there. Yeah, put these guys in like a like in a choke point, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Armor at 65, again another increase there of about 20 uh, on the Runic Warriors. And then we've got morale at, well it says 49 there, but it's base will be 38, which is pretty solid. I think that's pretty similar to like a Gondor infantry sort of morale. Uh, missile block is down actually at 30. These guys aren't as great at missile blocking as the Runic Warriors. That's something to bear in mind, I guess, if you're like in a siege, uh, which is kind of interesting. But um, yeah, I mean, are, the armor is up though, so I guess they can also soak up that fire uh, anyway. But yeah, so they are a very good unit. can form shield wall. They can just, just about do anything. 140 man unit. A solid, solid unit. I also just mentioned now that I will be doing a few Rosses at the end of this video. So if you want to get a few tips and tricks, or maybe some stuff to play as as these things, then uh, feel free to uh, stick around till the end of the video for them. But yes, we will now move on to the Spears. So I'll see you guys in a moment. So here we are. We're here with the Spears of these things. And as you can see, uh, we're starting again with the lowest tier. These are the Clan Spearmen. They look pretty average at best not even that i'd say below average but yeah these are a light spear unit levy again probably not going to be achieving too much for these guys they have an excellent melee defense um and average missile block chance and poor melee attack so yeah these guys maybe you'll throw into a like a siege battle like maybe into a choke point because they've got decent melee defense but they haven't got the greatest armor in the world and also they haven't got the greatest morale in the world so uh yeah I don't know if these guys would really hold that long, um, but maybe you, you have them for that. Or maybe it's a support in like a cavalry fight. Maybe you send these guys in to support your cavalry uh, against other cavalry. Who knows? But uh, yeah, melee attack at 20. They have melee damage of 27. And Mr. Spears don't do as much damage as swords and axes. That is just widely known um, in like Total War. Uh, charge bonus 15. That's going to be pretty standard, I think, for most of these spear units. Um, 38 melee defense, which is actually pretty good. Armor at 35. Um, and the health, obviously, 80. I mean, then we've got uh, 25 morale, yeah, which I'm pretty sure is the same as, like, the, the clan axemen. Um, and then we have speed 36. And missile block at 45, which is actually very, very good, um, I feel. It says average missile block chance, but that's probably the best that we've seen so far. Uh, well, equal best for what we've seen so far for these things. Um, but anyway, we'll move on to the next year, which is already we're like onto top tier stuff here. Like there's just a radical increase for spears uh, for these things. You have like low tier and then you have these guys. And this is the clan guards. These guys looking mighty fine. They do look very, very nice. These guys also look like the sort of stuff that you see in the, uh, like in the movies, uh, the clan guards. Uh, heavy spear infantry. They're trained. Uh, they're uh, excellent melee defense, excellent armor and average missile block chance. These guys I describe often as like the Pavi Spears of Rise of Mordor. They kind of look like it as well with their big shields. You can see here. And then they've got like a l nice long spear. Uh, and yeah, they've got really good stats for like defending a choke point. Melee defense of 56. Uh, armor at 70. Uh, missile block chance of 45. These guys have like 38 uh, like morale, which is also going to keep them in the fight for a long, long time. Um, their health is at 85. So they've actually got a little bit of an increase on that health there. Um, but yeah, melee damage uh, is at 27, and then the melee attack at 31, which is a little bit of an increase, but not much. Um, they can form square if they want to, which is also really handy, so like anti-cav in that sense. Yeah, this unit is really, really good at like defending a choke point. Definitely worth bringing uh, to the fight, that is for sure. But yeah, and then I'm also going to throw in this final unit over here, which is not necessarily a spear unit. But it is uh, like a sort of a... I don't know where else to really throw it. So we've got the Locurium Halberdiers here. They are, I guess, a slightly a spear unit. But 
They are not really. But yeah, these are the guys also that you see in the movies. These are actually, I think, the ones that Frodo and Sam nearly run into, which are like these the guys that like wielding halberds. They look awesome. Uh, they're a medium polearm unit. They've got excellent melee attack, excellent melee defense, poor missile block chance, as most polearms do in Rise of Mordor. You see they're down there at 20 for their missile block chance. Um, I don't know what they have here. Pike wall. All oh, right, so they have like that ability. Okay, the melee attack at 34, melee damage at 32. So it's not much better than um, than the clan guards, to be honest, on the stats. Uh, their armor is uh, 45, so they've got the reduced armor. And yeah, that, that kind of makes sense for when they get focused down. These guys, I feel like it's one of the weaker halberds. I'm not too worried about when I come uh, come up against the locum halberds, um, like. I think I could probably beat them with my halberds, or I can just shoot them down with archers. They are pretty squishy at killing with archers. Their uh, morale's at 38, which is pretty standard, I think, for Loki Rim. Um, but yeah, so the, yeah, these aren't the, the greatest, in my opinion. These uh, these halberds aren't that great. They're actually still pretty quick as well at 35. They're actually quite quick. I was kind of surprised that they're not like lower. But yeah, these guys, they're okay. They're pretty handy in a fight. Um, if you like, if no one else got halberds in the area, they'll probably beat. Uh, anything there, but if most halberds will beat uh, these low crew, I think they're like the similar sort of tiers, sort of something like a Prince's Coast Guard, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that is all of the halberds and the spears. Spears. We'll now move on to the shock infantry. So something that the East, well, like the little update that these things got added was a lot of low tier arch units. They now have uh, like two new low tier units. They have a levy one, and they have like another poor like trained one as well um but yeah so as you can see here we have the clan's huntsman as you can see that the clan's huntsman follow that pattern as the rest of the clan units of having pretty terrible stats uh very poor armor very poor missile block chance very poor accuracy these guys obviously you're just going to bring these clansmen if it's cheap stuff or probably in like a campaign you may bring these guys if you just desperately need to pump out numbers i guess um but yeah melee attack 17 melee damage 25 melee defense 15, armor 5, uh, health 80, and missile block chance 5. So these guys are getting hit hard by it. If you're like in a dueling these guys off with like another arch unit, they're getting uh, like beaten every time. They have no armor, like no missile block chance. They can't even dodge arrows, it seems. Uh, morale, it says 27, but I'm sure this is going to be, yeah, 19. It's the lowest morale unit we've seen so far today. Ammunition at 16. Range 150 and accuracy 4. So these guys can't even hit to save their lives either. Um, and they are getting outranged by a lot of stuff at 150. Um, so that is a real, real concern. But yeah, we will move on to the next unit quickly. Uh, and that is the Runic Archers. Which these guys, you know, these guys look a little bit more armoured. They look a little bit a little bit better. But uh, yeah, they are trained. But they are very light bows still. They are very poor missile block chance still. Very poor armour still. And very poor... A melee defense so these guys are not much better they've got a little bit better melee attack at 21 uh melee defense at 20 melee damage at 25 armor at 15 so they have a little bit more armor which is great health 80 missile block chance 10 they've got a little bit better there um their morale i think is at 24 um so yeah they're kind of like similar with um other clans clan units uh i mean it's 18 so they have a little bit more ammo as well to fire into and just miss with uh, accuracy at 15, so they have like three times the accuracy, and they have 160 range, so they are a little bit better, but they're still getting things outranged by um, elves, obviously, uh, and I th and like bardings, and I think even like Gondor archers, I think they're getting outranged by. Obviously, they would be beaten by them anyway in a uh, in a match because they're just better better archers. But yeah, we will move on to the actual like decent archers that you'll probably see being brought a lot in matches, and that here is the first one with the Loki rim archers. These guys look gorgeous. Oh, I just can't get over the Loki Rim. They look amazing. They really, really do. I do love the look of these guys. But uh, yeah, Loki Rim archers, still not like the best, but they are much better. I wouldn't say that these things are really flush in archers. I wouldn't say their archers is like where their strength is, but uh, they are pretty good. Average accuracy, as you can see here. They are medium bow infantry as well. Poor miss a block chance still, though. And poor melee defense, which, I mean, that's just standard with archers. I feel like every archer is a poor melee defense. The yeah, melee attack of 26. It's a little bit better. They are low-key rim. Melee damage 25. That's, again, the same. Melee defense at 26. It's a little bit better, but not much. But I think armor at 45. You can see these guys are, like, pretty well armored. You can see in the, like, the standard low-key rim archer, like, uniform. They've got all their nice... 
uh, engravings on their like all their little uh, feathers. I guess you call these, but I don't know what you really call them. But uh, yeah, so they are still looking. Pretty well armored. Health at 80. Missile block chance at 20. So, you know, these guys can actually block some arrows now. Dodge a few arrows. Morale says 40, but that will be 29. So, still, like, they're a lot a lot below the uh, the, the standard low curium units in morale. But, yeah, that's the highest we've had so far for archers. Ammo at 20. So, you know, have even more ammo than most uh, bow units. Um, and their range is 140, uh, 75. Sorry. So, they are, like, getting closer to, like, being able to rate, like, duel with elves and stuff like that and anchors at 29 so actually you know they can hit stuff these guys these luxury marches are not bad to be honest you bring these guys in a siege battle you should be fine um and then we have the final unit here which is a very nice unit and i really really do like this unit and this is the very uh bowman but we'll have a quick second have a look at these guys they look amazing i think these guys again getting that sort of nomad look to them um but yeah epe, uh, epe. Uh, they have excellent melee defense not epic melee defensive uh which yeah it is it's 46 i mean the melee attack at 30 30 is also pretty good melee damage at 38 is also pretty good charge bonus at 20 they actually have a charge bonus which is kind of mad uh armor at 55 so these guys also can like take a few shots if they need to health at 80 morale at, uh that says 40 but it's gonna be 29 uh so still not like great in the morale but it's not bad um like it's, I mean, it's the same as Locurium, I guess, but yeah, it's it's still not bad, I guess. Speed 34, ammo at 16, and missile block chance at 20. These guys definitely, I would say, and they're heavy bow infantry. I'd say that these guys are definitely what you count as a hybrid unit. These guys have got a good sword and shield variant, and they're actually pretty damn nasty in combat. Certainly, like late game, if like all you're down to is archers, and you're, and you're seeing like very uh, like bowmen coming up against you, you're probably like, oh, we're gonna lose this because they're much, much more capable of fighting in combat than most uh, archers in this game. Um, but yeah, so that is all the bows. We'll now move on to the cavalry, and that will be the end of like the unit overview. So I will see you guys in a moment. And I thought we were done with uh, range units, but we have one final one, and I forgot, totally forgot about them. And it's a very important one, because a lot of people do like to bring these guys, I've seen in uh, recent battles, certainly in land battles, they're playing as these things. And that is the Kandish Sentries, a medium skirmisher. It's a uh, Javi unit, and it's got miss uh, uh, It's got some pretty decent like um, like damage to it. Like, they actually do a lot of damage, to be fair. Me melee defense at 42, melee damage 38. Uh, melee attack 28. Uh, they have very poor missile block chance, good melee defense, poor accuracy. Yeah, I mean, throwing a javelin is never as accurate as firing a bow. Range at 60, obviously, that's pretty standard for Javis. Ammo at 8. Um, missile block chance at 15. Yeah, Javis is just not very good at uh, dodging stuff, it seems. Uh, base morale is at 34. Uh, and their armor 35. So, again, yeah, not going to take... They can't take too many hits. But, yeah, these are... Uh, these are the, uh, the the kind of sentries, so I'll have a quick look at them. They look kind of they look awesome. To be fair, I do really like this look. But yeah, that is the final unit. I forgot that they were. I threw was going to throw them in with bows, but I just didn't bother. Um, but yeah, they are they are the final like missile units to look at. So here we are, and since we were talking about missiles just before, we will hit. Here we are with the missile cav for the Eastlings. This is the Kandish uh, horse archers. So they throw Khan in with uh, Rude, which is kind of a bit sad because I would have loved to have seen an independent Khan faction, a Khan faction, in uh, in Rise of Mordor. As like they were really good in Third Age, but I would have loved to have seen them in Rise of Mordor. But anyway, at least they're represented in the Eastlings. Um, so they are a medium bow cav unit. They are, I mean, they're a horse archer. They've got very poor armor uh, because they have to be very quick moving. Uh, poor melee attack, poor accuracy. I mean, firing from a horse is pretty hard, to be fair. Melee attack at 21, melee damage at 25, melee defense at 25, armor at 30, uh, health at 160. They do, like, cavalry does usually have increased uh, like health. Morale is going to be pretty low at 25. It's uh, yeah, if you shoot a few arrows into these guys, I think they're going to break pretty quickly. Speed at 95, though. These guys are quick moving. Ammo at 18, so they've got similar sort of ammo to like some of the lower tier archers. Uh, range at 160, so again, similar sort of range to uh, like your like lower tier archers. I'm um, thinking like the runic uh, like sort of archers. I forgot what they. Uh, and then uh, yeah, accuracy at 15, as we've already seen there. But yeah, that is the only bow unit that the uh, that the uh, Eastings have. That we have uh, clan raiders here. Um, but yeah, these guys, light melee in cavalry that were added as well in the update. 
Uh, so these guys are pretty handy. Uh, they're actually seen them used quite a bit recently. Uh, melee cav is certainly certainly a, a handy asset to have. But yeah, these guys are uh, are only light melee cavs. So, I mean, you could focus these guys down quite easily. They have uh, they have very poor armor. They have uh, good melee defense, poor missile block chance, and uh, yeah, their melee attack is not much better than the horse archers at 26. Melee damage at 38, but their, uh, their charge bonus at 50, the melee defense at 40 is not too bad, to be fair. Um, like, the longer, like, cavalry's in com like, this cavalry's in combat, the better it does. Melee cav is very, very good in prolonged combat. Uh, armor at 15, so yeah, if this unit gets focused down, it is gonna feel the pain. Uh, health 160, like, standard for cav. Uh, its morale says 34, but that's gonna be, like, 23. Yeah, very, very low. This unit could break very, very easily. Speed at 95, again, very quick moving, and it's ammunition at 2. It does have a few jabbies available to it, so very handy. Missile block chance at 18, so yeah, not dodging many arrows either. Uh, certainly, you've got to try and avoid uh, archers with. Here we go, on to the cavalry that most people will be using, and that is the Variaga Lancers. And these guys look awesome as well. Getting that nomad look again uh, going. But yeah, average melee attack. Uh, they have average melee defense, poor missile block chance. And their melee attack at 34 is the highest we have so far. Melee damage at 20, uh, uh, 37, sorry, I think I said 24. Just, just chatting rubbish there. Uh, melee attack at 37 is the highest we've had so far. Uh, melee damage at 27. Um, and then we've got charge bonus at 85. So, you know, these guys can actually do a pack a punch and a charge. And then we've got armor at 55. So, they actually can take suck, uh, soak up a few shots. Health at 160. Morale... It's going to be somewhere like uh, 38. It's not too bad. And then we've got speed at 85. They aren't as quick, but they are still pretty quick. Uh, and then you've got missile block chance at 18. So they have the same missile block chance actually as the uh, as the the uh, the clan raiders. So that's kind of really surprising. Um, but yeah, then we go on to the final unit. And this is a unit you can bring as a general or as a command unit. Uh, these guys are nasty. This is the bait of the steps. Heavy command. Excellent armor. Excellent melee attack. Good melee defense. I mean, look at this unit. They reworked it, and I'm really glad that they did. I kind of like. I don't miss the old look of it. This unit, this how it looks now, looks amazing. Like the like the spikes on the horses, like from that, like the armor on their chests, look amazing. Like everything just looks great. It really, really does. This unit is just scary. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a pretty nasty unit. It's got melee attack of 48, the highest we've had yet. Melee damage at 32. It's certainly what I count as a melee cav, really, more than it is a shock cav. That is for charge bonus at 60. Um, it's melee defense at 42, as you see. That's pretty good melee defense. Armor at 85. Health 172. Is that increase in health as well? Morale um, it says 57, but it is 41. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good. 75 speed, as you can see, obviously being very, very, he like a heavy unit, it is reduced. Uh, missile block chance is at 32 as well, so you can actually dodge a few arrows. And yeah, this is a really good unit. Certainly see this being brought all the time as generals. Um, so yeah, a good unit to bring. And then the final unit, which is sort of a carry unit, uh, but we've thrown it in here, is Wayne Rider Chiefs. These guys are a chariot unit. And uh, yeah, there aren't. Many, this is like the only chariot unit in Rise of so nothing really to compare it to. But we'll have a quick look at, look at it anyway. We've got very heavy chariots here. Melee attack at 46, 38 melee damage, charge bonus 150, it just like, yeah, better than any cavalry around. Uh, melee defense at 40, armor at 45, health 740. I never realized it was that high, but I still feel like these guys can die pretty quickly. Morale at 91, that basically makes them unbreakable. These, yeah, these guys, I mean, base is at 80, but yeah, 91 morale there it says. Uh, it's still pretty impressive. Yeah, 80 morale, so basically unbreakable. Speed 75, so they are pretty quick, but not like they're about as quick as like uh, the Bane of the Steps. And then Missile Block Chance 20, so that is basically the way to take them out with missiles, is how you want to take these chariots out. Um, that is for sure. But yeah, that is all of the units now for the Eastlings. We will now go and uh, look at the like the rosters, and we will, uh, we will then wrap up this video. So I'll see you guys in a moment. So here we are back on like looking at all the rosters and as you can see we did cover just about every single unit here. 
So uh, yeah, the only other you, you, you have as well uh, units you can bring as a general. Bane of the Steps, you can also bring Wayne Riders as a general. And World of Ruin, which I forgot to mention to be fair. You can bring these guys as generals as well. Um, but yeah, so I will quickly put together, I guess, a roster that you could uh, build if you were playing a land battle. We seem to play with uh, 17, uh, 17 and a half thousand now. It seems to be more of a, a competitive uh, number that we play with. So I'd probably start off with a Bane of the Step general because you probably want to carry general just in case he needs to get from A to B. Um, I would probably then, i say... Bring maybe Varag Warriors and some shock. Probably want to bring some Loki Rim, like as your b base like infantry. Probably want to bring Loki Rim archers. Maybe a couple of these guys. Um, Varag Lancers almost certainly you want to be bringing. You're only capped at three. You are capped at three, so that is always a problem. Um, I mean that usually isn't a problem if you've got like limits of four cav, but uh, usually um, you might want to bring. You might want to bring a few more. Um, you might want to bring some pole arms. It is potential. It's very much up to you what you're like happy with, what your strengths are. I'm going to say bring some like javies, um, just to maybe like support cav fights. Uh, you probably want to bring that third variag actually, and you might want to bring like a elite like shock infantry, like a wall or a rune or something like that. That might be up to you as well. But that's something that you can maybe put together. I mean, that's not like the greatest roster in the world. You may want to do something different. You might want to bring like a uh, instead of kind of sentry, you might want to bring more archers for that range. You may feel comfortable bringing Wayne Riders. Maybe like I'm not going to bring an extra cab. I'm going to bring a Wayne Rider or something. Um, like some people enjoy them. I d honestly don't. Nine times out of ten, don't see them work. Um, like sometimes they have good games, but some most times they do not have great games. Uh, but that's something you could put together maybe for a land battle for a siege. Um, say we're doing yeah like a siege with. We usually do like 20k for a siege. Um, do a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so I would probably bring, again, a Bane of the Step General. I'd probably bring three Wars of Rune. I'd probably bring Loki Rune Maceman. Something like, yeah, five maybe of these guys. I'd probably bring maybe some Pole Arms. I think it's always good to have Pole Arms, even if you're not, um, like, even if they're not the greatest Pole Arms, you probably want to bring them. I'd probably bring Varric Bowman, because if it comes to, like, comes to it, and it comes down to the lowest of, the, like, a few troops left, you want Varric Bowman, because they're just better archers, and they're also good in melee. Um, I think I would bring maybe a couple of lancers, maybe one, I think I would bring just to like, maybe for the, uh, like, just in case there's a sally out, you have something to counter. Um, I also think I would bring, uh, maybe a javi, just to, like, because they're pretty good, they're also very dangerous at, uh, like doing da javi damage, or like doing a melee damage to, um, Melee damage, what am I on about? Doing like damage to like pikes and stuff. They got like high missile like damage. That's what I mean. And then I'd probably bring like two more Variags. Um, and then you could, I guess you could upgrade, I don't know, your Wards of Rune or something. Make these guys just super elite. There you go. That's something you could do. That's a, a Ross you could put together. That's actually kind of a pretty good one. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I would do, I would be quite happy with that. Maybe I'd get rid of one Halberdier and like put in. I don't know, maybe a runic warrior or something like. Instead, I'm. If like, it depends on the what faction was bring, be bringing like the pole arms. If I may just go forget it, I won't bring pole arms. I'll let someone else bring the better pole arms. But yeah, there you go, guys. That is the Eastling roster overview or today. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're not here, and a comment to show your support. And I will see you guys in the next one.